Hey class, how's it going? We got video two. I'm actually going to go through this whole um, process for predicting word equations for chemical re reactions. Uh, basically, the, the first practice, um, it says process for word equations. That's what it shows on your Teams. And then there's an answer key for it. But I'm going to go through this actual practice sheet and kind of go through most of it. I'm not going to answer all of it. I want you to try and fill in some as, as well. But I'm going to go through it as well and talk about how, like my brain process of what I'm thinking when I go through it. How do I look at these reactions? How do I tell which one is which? How do I kind of get the end product of it? Um, and so I'll go through this whole um, practice sheet right now, um, which is why it's a little darker because I'm going to throw the projection up here right now. And hopefully we can see it. There we go. It looks like, I know I'm very dark, I'm kind of a shadow on the side. But hopefully you can actually see the words to the worksheet that you are working on or looking at as well. So if you want to bring yours out and kind of go through at the same time, you can. If you just want to make some notes on the side, um, no problem. But, um, oh wait, cool, let's go through this. So it says, look at the reactants and decide what type of reaction will occur. So if we look at our, um, like how do we possibly tell again the different types of reactions? We have the five of them. Well again, if there's any hydrocarbons, if you ever see those C and H's, okay, like three, eight, you, and as soon as you see those and some kind of oxygen, you know that you're going to have a combustion reaction, that hydrocarbon combustion. If you have two, like single, if you have one single compound, so at the start, you start with something like this, H, C, L. If you just have that, nothing else. Well, the only thing that can happen is they can split apart, and so you're going to have a decomposition. If you have two elements on their own separately, something like lithium and oxygen, well, if they're just two elements on their own, the only thing that can happen is they can come together. And so you get a synthesis where they come together. If you have one element and one compound on the start side, again, you'll have that single displacement. And if you have two compounds, you can have a double displacement. So this kind of just, again, helps out, hopefully, of looking at like, how to know what kind of reaction you have. Let's bring my mouse a little closer here. All right. So let's kind of go through this. There. There's my mouse. Aha. Okay, so it says example one reactants are chlorine and sodium sulfide. So here we have chlorine, chlorine and sodium sulfide. So automatically, what do I know? This is going to be a single displacement. I have one element, one compound. I know it's going to be a single displacement. Okay, so that's what it's going to be. How am I going to know what the end looks like? Well, chlorine is my lone element, and so it's going to switch with the other non-metal. Because this is a non-metal, it's going to switch with the other non-metal. So the chlorine, a non-metal, will end up with sodium. Okay, so chlorine is going to go there, and sulfide is going to get kind of bumped out. So it has to be sodium chloride and sulfur by itself. So there is a single displacement on how to look at that one. If I go to example two, I have just potassium oxide to start. So I have one compound. The only thing that can happen is they can split apart, and that is a decomposition. Okay, so this becomes potassium and oxygen by itself. Try not to leave it as oxide. When it's together, it's oxide, but when it's on its own, it's oxygen. So try to make sure when you split it apart, um, you, you take that I back off and you, you put it back to its original element name. That way we can do that. All right, example three that I give you. We have aluminum chloride and barium nitride. So we have, again, two. Two, and I didn't actually spell this wrong here. I don't know why I have nitride diodide. I think there's a D that has to get over there, but no, nonetheless, um, we have two compounds. So when we have two compounds, we have a double displacement and our metals are going to switch. Okay? So I have aluminum chloride and barium nitride. If we switch these, our metals, that's what's going to happen. We get aluminum with nitrogen now and barium with chloride. And so that is our double displacement. So hopefully these are starting to click in and kind of just make sense as we go. If not, try and go back to either my intro video or the Tyler DeWitt one and see if those can help you. All right, we have in this last one, this uh, example that I give you on the second page, it says propane and it gives you the formula of C3H8, again, so that's our, our hydrocarbon and oxygen. Well, anytime you see those hydrocarbons and oxygen, it's gonna be a combustion. What does it make? It makes water and carbon dioxide, that H2O, and CO2, okay? So it makes those two things in the end. So now it says you try. 
You try, okay? And hopefully you can pause this video as you go along and you can try a few of these. And I'll give answers to a few of these. Not to all of them, but a few of these. So in the first one, it gives you barium and lithium sulfide. And you're going to need your periodic table, uh, mostly just for the single displacement ones and the double displacement ones. But um, so if you don't, go get your periodic table now or bring one up on the laptop, either one, or computer, or where you are. Um, let's go do this. This is an element and a compound. So what kind of reaction? We have a single displacement. Single displacement. Cool. And what's the word equation? Well, we're going to start with barium and lithium sulfide. Barium and lithium sulfide. That is going to turn into, and I just put an arrow, put an arrow to what it's going to turn into. Well, barium is the one all by itself. Where is barium on the periodic table? Is it a metal? Is it a non-metal? It is a metal. So barium is going to switch with my other metal, lithium. Okay, so those are going to swap. These two are going to swap. And so barium is going to be a sulfide. So it's going to be barium sulfide and just lithium all by itself. And cool. That one's done. We've got kind of our what our reaction is, and then what would it actually turn into? All right. Let's go to the next one here. I'll, we got it down here. It says magnesium and fluorine. So there's one element and one element. There's no compounds. So the only thing that can happen to these two is they can come together. So that is a synthesis. A uh, synthesis. So I have uh, magnesium and fluorine. Magnesium. And what about plus? Because that's what it means. Plus fluorine turns into, I'm going to use that arrow, that arrow again is, turns into something, and it turns into magnesium fluoride. Magnesium fluoride. Sorry for that. Not so great writing. Um, crouching down and getting smaller as I go, but hopefully you can, you can understand the words that I'm saying. So it turns into magnesium fluoride. And again, that ide is because it's an ionic bond. All of our reactions right now we're just looking at are just basically ionic bonds. And so I add that ide together there. So there's your word equation that goes across, OK? All right, cool. Let's keep going. See if I, I might do one more, and then I'll leave these ones that you can try out. Again, there is an answer key in team, so it's all there. Um, but I want to do a few up here. So let's see if I want to do any more. Uh, beryllium phosphide. Sure, let's do this one. Okay, so we have a compound at the start and an element. Okay, so this again is going to be our single displacement. And so what is going to switch? Well, let's go, I'm just going to do this right now. Beryllium. Phosphide. Instead of an, it would have a plus, plus nitrogen. That plus kind of means an. And it turns into what? Well, what's going to switch here? Nitrogen is the element that's all by itself. So what is nitrogen? Nitrogen is where in the periodic table? It's on your right side. It is a non-metal. So what's going to switch with the other non-metal, which is right now our phosphide? So these two are going to switch in our actual single displacement. So beryllium is going to be with nitrogen now. So we have beryllium. And nitride, and then phosphorus all by itself. Okay, so we can see that we have that beryllium nitride. Nitrogen turns to nitride because it's now an actual chemical bond. And phosphorus gets rid of its i because now it's by itself. So my two non metals switch, and that's what it kind of looks like in the end. All right, I think I can kind of get rid of those or be done with those. If you need to rewind and kind of look at that, that's all good. All right, so now in this section, all you have to do is just tell me whether it's a, I, like in this section, I think I added a blur up here, uh, right here. Like it says, uh, where's my, oh, there it is. It says once you have the reaction, you just kind of ignore this one line. I don't know how it kind of made it into there. I'm unsure. 
Um, but just go to this. Types of reactions. All we have to do is just look at it and tell me what kind of reaction is it. Is it a decomp synthesis, combustion, single splicing, double splicing? So this one, I have a lot of carbon and hydrogens and oxygen, and it turns into CO2 and heat. Hopefully now you can kind of know that's a combustion. Here we have gold oxide, a compound, and they split apart into gold and oxygen by itself. And so this is a decomp. Decomposition. Decomp. Now I give some weird little funky um, symbols here. And I don't want to throw you off too much. But if you were to guess what this is, uh, it is a compound. It is two things together, kind of like a compound. This is a shape all by itself, kind of like an element. And so then it turns into, well, I have one element, and then I have a kind of a new compound. This, this circle decided it didn't like square anymore. It went to triangle, OK? And so it started a new compound, and square is left alone. So poor, poor square. Um, but what kind of reaction is this, where we have a compound and an element, and then still a compound and the element in? This is a single displacement. And I'm just going to put an SD for now. Single displacement. Okay. So I wanted to get here just to kind of mention out and talk about these shapes because I want to use these shapes kind of a little bit going forward. And so yeah, this is a compound. This is an element. And kind of going forward. All right. Try the rest of this section on your own. You can answer keys there. All right. Cool. Let's keep going. Do, 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 do. Next section, naming products. So this is now where you have to tell me what's going to happen at the end. Okay, it says tell me what type of reaction. I'll put the type of reaction right here. And then give me the name of what we'll turn into over here. All right, first one. I have a compound and a compound. Calcium bromide, potassium iodide. So that is two compounds. That is going to be our double displacement. So we'll put that right here. Double. Displacement. All right, cool. What's going to be at the end? Well, what switches and it also isn't? Our metals switch. So our calcium and our potassium are going to switch. So I'm going to get, in the end, calcium iodide, calcium iodide, and I'm going to get potassium bromide, potassium bromide. Cool. So that one's done. OK, I've got the reaction type, and then I've got what comes at the end. Next, I have magnesium oxide. I have a compound, nothing else. So they're going to have to kind of split apart. So this is going to be a decomposition. Decomposition. And what is going to be in the end? Well, it's going to be magnesium on its own, so magnesium. And then I'm going to plus to show that it's by itself. And then on its own is going to be not oxide, but oxygen. Because it's on its own. All right? Cool. So hopefully you can try these ones. Again, you can kind of notice they're both kind of single displacements. Make sure you know which one's by itself, whether it's a metal or it's a non-metal, and switch it with what it needs to be. Again, answer key is there. So, all right. And then last part here. I want to talk about this one. This is where you're going to have to actually use the table a little more carefully. to go through this. On your sheet, I actually did this right away, OK? I added that. That is a transitional metal. If you get confused by that, don't worry, OK? I'm going to skip all the way, honestly, to number C, OK? I'll come back and do these ones in my next video. Um, because, And I can tell you, these two questions are not going to be on the quiz. The reason is this is a transitional metal. And I don't want this, I shouldn't say quiz, your little assignment. I don't want to put any transitional metals. I want to kind of keep it simple for this week. And this one it has a covalent bond that I, I don't want to do right now. We want to stick to the ionic bonds. So in the answer key, it's there. But honestly, don't worry about it. I'm not going to have any kind of these questions on the quiz just because, or the assignment because of transitional metals and because of covalent. I want to get to C and D and a little beforehand and talk about these and how to do these. OK? So C. First off, what type of reaction is this going to be? I have just a compound. What's going to happen afterwards? Well, I'm going to have a decomposition. OK? And then what is it going to turn into? Well, it's going to turn into H and O, hydrogen and oxygen. But 
Try and remember, if things are on their own, like if hydrogen is on its own, it, it's not going to go around just as hydrogen. Things always, almost always go around in pairs because they have to like covalently bond or ionic bond or something. So they're not reacting all the time. So hydrogen is going to be H2 and oxygen is going to be H2. I'll give you the easy thing, and this is all I want you to do. If ever anything is by itself, an element is by itself, just keep it as two. H2, O2, and you'll never get it wrong. Okay? Ever, ever, ever. So if anything is just by itself, an element is by itself, put it as two, and you'll always get it right. I promise. Okay? For at least grade 10 of that science. In grade 11, grade 12, we'll talk about later. But for this year, keep it like that and defer. So that, that question is answered. I've done decomposition and I've split them apart. I've made sure that they have, like, they're together, H2 is together, uh, and it's all good. So here, what type of reaction is this? It, it could look like a single displacement, and I get that, because there's a compound and an element. But be careful, what is this? This is carbons and hydrogens, and this is oxygen. So this is a hydrocarbon, okay, our combustion. What is it going to turn into? Combustion always turns into just the exact same thing. It always turns into water, H2O, plus CO2, and energy. Okay, and that's what we're going to put at the end. It turns into water, which is H2O, it turns into carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and it gives us energy. Cool. Last one we're going to do here, E, for this video. Because I've already got a 16 minute video, and I didn't want that long. Last one. We have NABR, MGS, so we have two, two uh, compounds. Um, this is going to be a double displacement, so I'm just going to go with DD for double displacement. Ah, let's write it out. Let's write it out. Double displacement. And again, what's going to switch in double displacement? Just our metals. So our NA and our MG are going to switch. But we have to do, you still use a periodic table, we still have to know how these things go together. So for now, I'm going to put down MGBR and NAS. Now, though, I have to think, how do these things actually go together? Like using my ionic bond theory. Again, kind of my chart is. Well, MG is in family two, it wants to give away two. BR only wants to take one. So we kind of need, again, two of these. Okay? And then over here, sodium has one extra, sulfur needs two, so I kind of need two of these again. So you gotta go back to your ionic bonding for this, these kind of questions and make sure you remember how do they actually go together, okay? In the next practice sheet, I go through a little more of this, and in the next video, I'll do a few more of these types of questions. All right, so there's your first practice sheet, how to go through them. Uh, the next video, I'll go through the actual like uh, types of reactions exercises, basically the practice sheet number two. All right, class. Thanks so much. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. Okay.